Hello and welcome to Insight, the programme where we get under the skin of organisations across the aerospace industry, talking to the leadership in those businesses. And this programme is brought to you with the support of Embraer Commercial. Now, I guess Embraer are going to be pretty impressed with our special guest today, as I'm sure you all are, as we welcome to the programme Sama Majali, the Vice Chairman and Chief Executive of Royal Jordanian, Jordan's national carrier. Now, Mr. Majali was in Bahrain, having signed a big, major deal for engines for new aircraft. And he's joining us today to talk about the airline and its strategy going okay. forwards. So, Sama, welcome to the programme. Now... The aviation industry, as ever probably, is going through some turmoil, isn't it, with high fuel prices, geopolitical issues. How's it going for Royal Jordanian? Um, you know, anybody in the airline business, it's always a tough ride. Um, COVID was probably one of the toughest rides ever uh, in the history of aviation, civil aviation, uh, since the Second World War, uh, because of its length of the duration. Um, and still, the, the, the tail end effects of COVID are still here with us. Um, unfortunately, that crisis was, and we thought we were out of that crisis, uh, but unfortunately, um, the events, uh, unfortunate events in the Eastern Europe have caused, again, a global uh, commodity crisis and, and prices across the board increases, uh, including fuel. And fuel is obviously one of the largest um, elements uh, in an airline cost structure and that has gone astronomically uh, uh, north um, and has become a huge burden uh, on the airlines. So whereas traffic has actually come back to and has exceeded 2019 levels, unfortunately fuel prices has eaten up most of that benefit and more. Um, currently with Royal Jordanian uh, the cost of fuel represents 50% 50% of the airline's operating cost structure, which is just huge. Um, you can't pass on the high ticket prices to, to consumers. Uh, we've passed on a little bit, but obviously we can't recover all of it because we're in open competition with others. Uh, so this is unfortunately uh, another issue that we have to deal with. On the upside, obviously the traffic figures are, are doing very well. Uh, traffic is up. Uh, as I said, uh, beyond, uh, in a lot of cases, 2019 levels, pre-COVID levels. Um, and uh, Royal Jordanian has, is in the process of announcing a, and has announced a fleet uh, renewal plan, uh, fleet renewal and growth. OK, so that shows optimism for a bright future with that kind of investment. And it sounded like your fleet renewal is focused very much not just on saving costs, but also saving the environment, I guess, with your selection. So tell us about that fleet renewal decision. Actually, frankly, uh, that renewal, number one, is long overdue for Royal Jordanian. Uh, but the second thing is that uh, in, at this point in time, the new aeroplanes that we're introducing uh, will actually be cheaper for us, uh, in spite of the increase in lease payments, uh, aircraft ownership costs uh, of bringing in new aeroplanes. Uh, but the reduction in fuel consumption and the very positive environmental effects of these new aeroplanes that are coming in actually, from an economic point of view, is better than keeping the old aeroplanes. Um, normally, obviously, people renew the fleets for passenger appeal and other uh, considerations. But uh, in this case, actually, from an economic point of view, it makes economic sense to actually introduce the new aeroplanes and remove the old ones because of the big improvements in maintenance, uh, cost and reliability, and, and fuel. So you selected the Embraer E2, the new regional jet, which I guess ties in very strongly with that idea of being the airline of the Levant and all of those regional centres. So can you tell us about that decision and what you expect from the aircraft? Okay, I mean, Royal Jordanian doesn't have a, such a large fleet. Uh, it has, um, uh, at the moment, 26 aeroplanes, uh, narrow bodies and, and, uh, and uh, uh, regionals. Uh, and we're going to expand that fleet to anywhere between 40 and 45 aeroplanes over the next five years. Um, but we've had to introduce regional jets um, as a third fleet for us uh, in order to be able to uh, move ahead with our strategy of blanketing the region with a lot of regional flights, um, reaching every primary and secondary destinations within the region 
uh, and provide excellent feed into Oman that will allow us to, be, to expand our global network into Europe, uh, the Far East and North America. So uh, we needed an airplane which is small in size uh, that will allow us to increase frequency. Um, and you know, as an analogy, um, four flights a week into a place like Erbil from Oman uh, the, on a narrow body would be equivalent to having a daily flight uh, on, on an Embraer, uh, which means that uh, we can offer a better product to our customers uh, in terms of offering daily flights and multi-daily flights. So introducing the regional airplanes, a modern regional airplane with uh, very relaxed seating, uh, very comfortable, with full wireless connectivity with the ground, um, uh, operated on two-hour flights from Oman, uh, will be a big plus for our customers. Now you've also announced additional and replacement narrow bodies, selecting Airbus A320 and A321neos. Tell us about that. We're moving from 13 aeroplanes that we have today to about 20 uh, over the next, again, as I said, three to four year period. Um, essentially, we've been operating, the, we were launch customer for the 320 back in the 80s uh, in the region. Um, and. Uh, uh, for us, we've operated the aeroplane for many, many years. Our investment is, has been in this aeroplane in terms of pilots, spare parts, and so on. So it was, even though we did a competition, in the end, uh, our, the logical choice for us and the best economic choice was for us to go with the um, A320 family NEO uh, aeroplanes, um, saving a lot on in initial investment costs, crew training, and, and so on. And we're very happy with the 320 uh, as well. Again, this aeroplane will be provided with uh, very comfortable seating, uh, business class and economy seating uh, on the 320s um, with uh, full wireless uh, connectivity uh, with the ground and in-seat entertainment throughout. Um, we will also have some aeroplanes in all economy configuration and again they will be provided with wireless and entertainment, in-seat entertainment. Um, and we will have, we'll be also bringing in some 321s with live flat seats and those 321s will be deployed on longer range uh, flights into Europe uh, to be compatible with our 787 offering. And Samo, what about, what about the engine choice, particularly for the NEOs? On the engine choice, we've, uh, on the Embraer's, obviously there's only a single engine choice uh, with, uh, that comes with the aeroplane, it's the, the Pratt & Whitney uh, GTF. Um, on, the, uh, on the 320, uh, there's a choice, uh, obviously, between uh, Pratt and & Whitney and, uh, and CFM. Uh, again, it was a very stiff competition, uh, but in the end, we've decided to uh, proceed with uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, for our engine uh, choice on the 320 family of aeroplanes. Um, the GTF, along with the CFM engine, both engines have had um, challenges within the region because of the conditions, the environmental conditions of heat, uh, humidity, and, and dust. And those are very challenging um, uh, very challenging um, uh, issues that, ha that affect new engines coming into service. Um, with time, all these uh, problems would disappear. Uh, you know, modifications uh, come and, and are introduced uh, over time, um, and the engine then matures, even in these very difficult uh, climate. So uh, it was a quite a difficult choice, but in the end, we, we went ahead with the, uh, with the Pratt Mini GTF. The total order is um, probably um, uh, total number of engines installed will be 60 engines on both fleets uh, and obviously we'll have quite a few spares uh, with us as well. So it's quite a, um, a, quite a substantial part of, of business for Pratt & Whitney. We will be the, probably the second customer in the region to operate the GTF um, uh, engine uh, on the 320 and uh, we'll be one of the first customers uh, operating the uh, GTF engine on the Embraer E2s. Okay, so let's, let's move on to your long haul plans. You've, you've already got the Dreamliners, and do you see anything happening in that segment as, as you extend? We are also proceeding with replacement and expansion of the wide-bodied fleet. Um, we will actually start with the expansion first because our current 787s are not very old. Um, we got deliveries of these aeroplanes in 2014 and 2016, um, so they still have quite a lot of mileage left in them. Uh, so we'll be introducing newer 787s hopefully within the next few years, um, uh, and uh, uh, probably at the rate of one per year at least, 
um, uh, building up the fleet to about 11 airplanes, 11 or 12 airplanes down the line, and um, then start the replacement of the current Dash 8s that we have uh, in service. Obviously, they are deployed on long-range routes, our long-range routes into Canada and North America, uh, well, the United States, uh, as well as the Far East. But we also deploy the 787 on um, uh, routes where we have multiple daily flights um, in the region, uh, Dubai, Cairo, Istanbul, uh, and also we use the airplane extensively into London as well. Okay, so we have real positive moves towards a modern and more sustainable fleet. And you've also signed up with IATA, of course, for its initiative on sustainability. How important is it for our industry and for airlines like yours to actually take positive steps and actions for sustainability? Airlines uh, are not new to this environment thing. Uh, there have been... Every fleet renewal is, is obviously um, a big step in terms of improving the environmental uh, uh, footprint uh, that airlines create. And trying to maintain the same footprint while airlines are growing is achieved by introducing new technology. Uh, the new impetus now is to actually look at other areas where we can actually save, uh, uh, conserve fuel, uh, using um, sustainable aviation fuels, um, even though they're more expensive and, and hardly available, but airlines are trying to, um, uh, and, and Royal Jordanian is trying to obtain uh, sustainable aviation fuels. On the new airplanes, we can use up to 50% sustainable aviation fuels as a mix with the current fuels. So that's, I think, an important uh, element. Um, and. Uh, uh, we will be introducing many other um, uh, environmentally um, uh, um, uh, initiatives within the airline itself to be able to reduce our footprint um, in cooperation also with our passengers. Well, thank you, Samara. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today and thank sharing you. Thanks, your sir. strategy Thanks, and your plans with us. So that was Sama Majali from Royal Jordanian. And uh, once again, thank you to Embraer for sponsoring this program. Don't forget, you can see other insights and spotlights programs by going onto our YouTube channel, that's Times Aerospace, or of course on our website on timesaerospace.aero. Thank you for watching.